Hello everyone, so today we'll be looking at the types of long-term memory and as always I'll be following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A-level year one and AS with the green-haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise, I've included your AQA specification point, which is types of long-term memory, episodic, semantic and procedural. So you need to know the definitions for episodic, semantic and procedural. And if you are asked to identify differences between types of long-term memory, you must compare the types based on feature and not by type of long-term memory. So I'll have a look at what that means a bit later in this presentation and as I've got a table that has been put together to illustrate that and also you need to know that these different types of long-term memories were put forward by Tulvi as he saw the multi-store model which we've looked at previously as too simplistic so remember the multi-store model is your one where you've got the sensory register short-term memory and long-term memory as three separate stores but here we're looking at long-term memory being broken down into three different stores so firstly, we have episodic memory. I remember this one because episodic begins with an E. And when we think about this, we need to be thinking of events. So think of your last birthday, your most recent visit to the dentist, what happened in a lesson that you've been to, what happened on a video call, something like that. That is what episodic memory is. And these memories are time stamped. So you remember when they happened. And your memory includes several events so it's not only that you remember you had a birthday and you did that it also has specific parts to it so the people that were there the objects that were in the room and the behaviors that were experienced they all produce a single memory but you have to make this conscious effort to recall episodic memories Next, we have semantic memory. So I've got an example there of the flag on the right hand side that that is Chile's flag and the capital is Santiago. So this is our knowledge that we have of the world and it includes things like facts and long term memory of this type semantic has been referred to as a dictionary and an encyclopedia. So it includes our knowledge of things like how we would apply to university what the taste of oranges is and the meaning of words just a few examples but that last one is particularly important so your semantic knowledge includes different concepts such as what it means to love someone or to not like someone but you wouldn't remember when you first uh, learnt of the concept love so these memories are not time stamped and another example I've got here is we wouldn't remember when we first learned that the capital of Spain is Madrid and semantic memory is constantly being added to. Finally, we have procedural memory. So I've got examples there of riding your bike or tying your shoes. We also have driving a car. So this is your memory for actions and skills. So if we look at a car, when we indicate into a junction, we don't have to think about that unless you're learning how to drive. Once you've learnt, you will automatically do it. And if you try and explain what you're doing to somebody else, the task itself becomes very difficult. So we now have our AA3. So our first strength that we will look at is clinical evidence. So here we can look at HM and Clive Waring. The episodic memory was impaired and that was in both of them. And that was as a result of something called amnesia. So they had difficulty remembering past events that they'd experienced. But their semantic memories were in text. So they understood concepts such as dog, but HM couldn't remember that he'd stroked a dog half an hour before, but he wouldn't need the concept of dog being explained to him. So therefore that particular aspect of memory was intact. And their procedural memory was also intact, so they could both tie their shoelaces. And in Clive Waring's case, he could also play the piano, which supports Torving's view of long-term memory, because we have this clear evidence that these types of memory are different and are stored in different parts of the brain. However, these are both case studies and we can critique those in the sense that that cannot be generalised to everyone. But we have a sound conclusion here because we can clearly see from the behaviours that they were showing that there are different parts to the brain in terms of where the memories are stored. 
A further strength is neuroimaging evidence. So here we're looking at the evidence for different memories being stored in different parts of the brain. So Tolving here is our research support for this because he got participants to perform various tasks whilst having their brain scanned at the same time using a PET scanner. And what he found was that episodic and semantic memories were both recalled from the prefrontal cortex, but much more specifically, the left prefrontal cortex is involved in your semantic memories and your right prefrontal cortex is involved in your episodic memories. Now, I remember these by left and S because I can think of someone's name that relates to those two things. So that stops me getting those confused. That is a little technique that I use to remember those and same with R and E I know a person's name with the first name R and the last name E so it helps me remember it by that way. What this also does in terms of neuroimaging evidence it gives a physical reality that there are different types of long-term memory within the brain. We also have real life applications this is another strength we are being able to recognise different aspects of long term memory, which allows us as psychologists to target certain behaviours to better people's lives. So we have a study here from Belleville et al. And what they did was demonstrate that episodic memories, so that's your events, could be improved in older people who had mild cognitive impairments. So they had a control group and they had a training group. The trained participants performed much better on a test of episodic memory than that of a control group who didn't get the training. And what this does is it shows us the benefits of distinguishing between different types of long-term memory as it enables specific treatments to be developed. You can also think of that in terms of the economy. If we know different types of uh, training helps individuals and it's more likely that we'll save money because we'll be able to help them easier than what we would do if we didn't have that knowledge. A limitation is that we have problems with clinical evidence so we have gained a vast amount of knowledge from studying patients with these brain injuries but it also ha comes with many limitations because the brain injuries themselves are unexpected we don't expect that person to particularly have that particular injury at that one time so the psychologist has no control over what has happened to the patient prior to when they've seen them so there's this lack of control over variables and in the case of amnesia the psychologist has very little idea of what the patient's memory was like prior to the injury. So they cannot know how much worse it is now than what it was previously, years ago and months ago. They wouldn't know. So what they have to do is rely on family input with interviews, which might not be entirely accurate. So something that we need to think about is that is there three types of long term memory or two? This is a bit of a limitation because Cohen and Squire come along and disagree with Tolvin's idea that there are three types of long term memory. Instead, Cohen and Squire argue that there is two. So they argue episodic and semantic memories are stored together in one store called declarative memory because they are consciously recalled. And then they argue that procedural memory has its own store called non-declarative. And that is because procedural memories are not consciously recalled. So it's important really that we get these distinctions right because we are wanting to apply this knowledge accurately to help people who suffer from amnesia. And it's also important from a scientific viewpoint because we should be accepting a theory that best matches the evidence. So I've just had a look through the exam questions and I found this one on an AS paper one from June 2016. So Annie can still skateboard even though she hasn't skated for many years. Germaine can still recall what happened on her first day at university even though it was ages ago. Billy remembers the names of the tools he needs to repair the broken tap. Identify three types of long term memory and explain how each type is shown in one of the examples above. So you're looking to name those three that we have just been talking about and linking it to this item in terms of what each person shows, which type is being shown. And here we can see from the mark scheme, we've got to have one mark for each correct application in recognising each type of long term memory by matching to the person in the stem. So the item above, you have to make sure you're matching that 
to the right person. And below it gives you the exact examples of how they would expect to see. So Annie, we've got procedural memory, she is skating. We've got Jermaine who has got episodic memory because that's an event, the first day of university, she can still remember that. And then Billy is semantic memory because he's remembering factual information of the tools he needs to repair the broken tap. So really make sure you're linking that to the item. So another question is from an A-level paper one from June 2017. So this is two types of long-term memory or procedural memory and episodic memory. Explain two differences between procedural memory and episodic memory. So here you do not want to be thinking about semantic. This question actually tripped a lot of students because they got confused about what it means by explain two differences. So you want to be mentioning here features which we'll have a look at because i've got a table that follows next but what a lot of people did was do it in terms of the types of memory they compared the type and not the features so here you can see i've broken that down into feature and type a lot of students were looking at the type but we want to be comparing on feature versus feature so it was looking there at procedural and episodic so ignore the last column but I would say you want at least a couple of these up your sleeve in case this sort of question does come up again. So if we look at coding for them both, you can say that a difference here is, or procedural is not timestamped, but episodic is timestamped. Make it really clear in your answer. And here you've got your mark scheme of possible differences. I also had on that other table back there about the different areas of the brain it mentions that on the mark scheme and it mentions just different examples that can use and it's all very helpful okay thank you for listening and best of luck with the rest of your revision